This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Boston Red Sox faced the Washington Senators at D.C. Stadium for opening day on Monday, April 12, 1965. Boston was a below-average team, having finished no better than sixth place in the previous five seasons. They entered the 1965 season under new manager Billy Herman, who had taken over for the final two games of 1964 after the firing of Johnny Pesky. The Senators were one of the worst teams in the American League, having lost 100 or more games in each of their first four seasons as an expansion franchise. They were managed by Gil Hodges, who took over the club midway through the 1963 season. This audio recording is from the Boston Radio broadcast, featuring announcers Kurt Gowdy, Mel Parnell, and Ned Martin. It's Red Sox Baseball, brought to you by the Brewers of Narragansett Lager Beer, the beer with that famous straight from the barrel case. By the Atlantic Refining Company and your local Atlantic dealer. And your host for the opening inning, White Owl Cigars. The cigars made the costly way, with tobaccos aged in wood for mildness and flavor. And Tipperillo by Robert Burns. The modern smoke found in all the right places with all the right people. Play ball with the Boston Red Sox. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Baseball 1965. A beautiful day here in the nation's capital. Temperature in the 70s. A bright sun beaming down. The President of the United States has just officially opened the baseball season by throwing out not one baseball, but two. And uh, the Red Sox lost in the catching of opening day baseball because Steve Ridzik caught the first one tossed out by President Johnson and Mike Brumley the second. So the president is now in the presidential box and a poor Yaki Indian boy from just outside Mesa, Arizona, Phil Ortega, is warming up for the Washington Senators and a lad of French-Canadian descent, Bill Mambouquet, is warming up for the Boston Red Sox. New manager Billy Herman is down at home plate, along with returning manager Gil Hodges to change the lineup, go over the ground rules, and get the season underway. The Red Sox will have uh, in their lineup today a rookie, Rico Petricelli. He'll be the only rookie in. There are other changes, though. Lenny Green is a newcomer in the lineup. Lee Thomas will be playing a new position. Outside of that, it's about the same. The Senators have rather a new-look team with Big Frank Howard. Uh, they have uh, Ken McMullen from the Dodgers and Phil Ortega also of the Dodgers. And they're hoping for better things, as are the Red Sox. And as we get this 1965 baseball season underway, very happy for me to introduce the newest member of the Boston Red Sox broadcasting team, a fellow who gave us a great thrill right here in this ballpark back in 1952 when he pitched a three-hit shutout before President Truman. And I think you've been listening to us enough on the air over many years. Time after time, we lamented if we could only get another left-hander like Mel Farnell. We've got him back again. Now, instead of a great pitcher, he's a broadcaster. Mel, let me warmly welcome you to the Red Sox broadcasting crew. Thank you, Kurt. Certainly a pleasure being with you and Ned Martin. Looking forward to a great season. I'm sure it'll be quite interesting. It's a complete new phase of baseball for me, the one that I've enjoyed so far this spring. In this opening day crowd, it brings back memories of 1952 when I pitched against the Washington Senators in the old Griffith Stadium. At that time, President Truman threw out the first ball, and at that time, Truman had a 3-0 record, and we did uh, beat the, the Washington Ball Club on that day breaking President Truman's record also. So it, it brings back fond memories of it for me, and it's certainly a great day for baseball today. Both ball clubs are loosening up and going through their pre preliminary throwing to start the ball game. All right, Mel, and uh, we wish you a lot of luck, and if you're just a half as good a broadcaster as you were a pitcher, you're going to be a smash hit. Back with us again is Ned Martin. Ned's going to give you the starting lineups in just a moment. And let me say, ladies and gentlemen, we always open the season with anticipation, with a great deal of happiness, but this year with sadness. Our companion of five years, a dedicated broadcaster, a gentleman, a loyal friend, Art Gleason, is not here. And this is a sad opening for us that Art is not with us. He died last November. And we are dedicating from our broadcast booth 
1965 series of broadcasts to the late Art Gleason, one of the finest men I have ever known, not only in sports, broadcasting, but in any field of life. And now here's Ed Martin for the starting lineup. Thank you, Kurt, and good afternoon, everybody. Well, it is a new-look Senator Ball Club out on the field that we saw in practice, and uh, several parts of the Red Sox of 1965 are new look. A lot of the faces are the same, but in different positions. Here's the starting lineup before this opening day crowd as the Senators take the field. Red Sox have Petra Kelly at shortstop leading off. Lenny Green in center field, batting number two. Carl Yastrzemski in left, hitting third. Tony Canigliaro in right field, batting number four. Lee Thomas at first base, batting number five. Felix Mantilla at second base, hitting six. Frank Malzone at third base, batting seventh. Bob Schulman, the catcher, hitting eighth. And Bill Mambo Kett, the pitcher, batting ninth. Mambo with a fine spring and a fine second half of the year last year, particularly against these Washington Senators who shut them out three times. For the Senators, John Blassingame is the second baseman leading off. Ken McMullen over from the Dodgers is at third base, batting number two. Bob Chance at first base, hitting third. Frank Howard in left field is in the cleanup spot. Don Locke, the center fielder, batting number five, and Locke was one of their best hitters this spring. Willie Kirkland, veteran right fielder, batting number six. Mike Brumley, the catcher, hitting seventh. The sharp fielding Eddie Brinkman at shortstop, batting eighth. And Phil Ortega. He's doing the pitching. Ortega had a tremendous spring after coming over from the Dodgers. Finished up with an earned run average this spring of about 1.96. And he gets the starting nod from manager Gil Hodges of the Senators. A right-hander with plenty on the ball out from around the Mesa Scottsdale area. The umpires for this opener. Behind the plate, Joe Paparella. At first base, Ed Hurley. At second base, Frank Umont. And at third base, Bob Stewart. So here it goes, 1965. Is it going to be a long, hot summer for either of these teams or both? We don't know. It's only ours to tell you about it and wait and see. Rico Petroselli leading off for the Red Sox and here for the play-by-play, Kurt Gowdy. All right, Ned, 21-year-old Rico Petroselli from Brooklyn, New York, standing in. He's turned himself into a switch hitter. He'll be batting left against a right-hander, Ortega, who's primarily a fastball pitcher. They're playing Petrocelli to the opposite field, and the first pitch of the season is outside for ball one. Lenny Green is crouched on deck, and in the hole is Carl Yastrzemski. Petrocelli stands deep in the box, slight crouch, takes a strike call, looks like a slider, and the count's one and one. Playing in on the grass is McMullen, the third baseman, and Chance is in tight at first in case of the bunt. A one-one pitch to Petrocelli. He takes it high and outside, ball two. Petrocelli has no doubt about his fielding ability. And Billy Herman, in trying to tighten up the club defensively, is giving him a shot at short. There is a doubt about his bat. And the kids will have to prove that. The pitch is swung on and foul back, but he is a marvelous fielder with great range, good pair of hands, and a strong arm. And if he can hit even a little, he could be a coming Major League star. Two and two, the counts of Rico Petrocelli. The wind today is blowing cross from third to first. A bright sun out, a stadium packed here. A beautiful side on opening day. All right, Ortega gets his sign from Mike Brumley. Here's his stretch in the pitch. It is swung on and foul out of play. So we have the count still two and two. Over there in President Johnson's box, we see Joe Cronin, the president of the American League, and Mike Higgins. Vice President of the Red Sox sitting over there. Mike Higgins is an old friend of Lyndon Johnson from Texas. Brings up a famous story I'll have to tell you about later by Johnny Orlando. Here's the wind up in the pitch. It is a foul. No, oh, he struck him out. Struck him out. Looked like a foul tip. Petrocelli swung and missed. Brumley dropped the ball and then tagged him. So Ortega strikes out the first batter he faces of the season. And it is Lenny Greenup now who had a fine spring training for the Red Sox. He went in with the Red Sox on a minor league roster. Rochester on a look-see basis and was so impressive the Red Sox signed him. Green had been with Minnesota and the Angels. He was a regular two years ago. Left-handed batter takes high, ball one. 
Then along came Jimmy Hall, hard-hitting young outfielder. They put him in center field, Green on the bench, and uh, you get on that bench sometimes, your timing goes. Green still thinks he's a major league ball player. He pops it up. It's out in the shallow left, backing up his Brinkman in the shortstop. He's under it, and Brinkman grabs it for out number two. Ortega has quickly disposed of the first two batters, two up, two down. Carl Yastrzemski up. Carl will be batting left against the right-hander. The outfield playing Yastrzemski straight away. 289 hitter last year after winning the American League batting title the year before. A slow ball is high for ball one. Ortega mixes it up more than I thought, Mel. That's the last pitch is a slow curve. He uh, relies mainly on the fastball. And his fastball does sink a little, which can make him very effective. Here's the 1-0 pitch. There's a swing and a foul ball going out of play. One ball, one strike. It's swinging late on him, Mel. He must be quick. All three left-hand hitters have been late. Uh, Petroselli was late. Uh, Green was late. And now Call has fouled one back in the third base. Uh, coaching box, and of course, uh, he is a little quick. He's uh, making it a little tough on the left-hand hitters. 1-1 delivery is a slow ball, tapped out the short, change of pace pitch. Flashing game over to Chance at first, and Ortega breezes through the first inning. So the Red Sox had three up, three down, and at the end of the first half inning, the score is the Red Sox nothing, with the Senators coming to bat. <laughs> Massachusetts, the Speaker of the House, Representative Gerald Ford of Michigan, the House Minority Leader, Senator Mike Mansfield, the Senate Majority Leader, Senator Everett Dirksen with his curly gray hair flying in the wind, the um, Senate Majority Leader, Senator Wayne Morris of Oregon, George Smathers of Florida, Representative Wilbert Mills of Arkansas. Don Blassingame swings in the first pitch and pops it up. It's down the foul line, backpedaling his Thomas, up chance, and he won hands it beautifully, going away from home plate. That wind kept carrying the ball back, and the big crowd here in Washington gives him a hand, so it doesn't take long for us to have the first fielding gem of the 1965 season. That was a tough play for Lee Thomas. That ball kept drifting with the wind, and Lee had to go a long way to make a, a one-handed catch, stretching his far as he possibly could. Uh, it was a great play on Lee's part. Well, he must be thrilled with that one. And, uh, not his new position. He's played there before for the Angels, but with the Red Sox, he's now at first base. Ken McMullen is up. McMullen, a right-handed batter, takes the first pitch high, ball one. Well, if Mambo Kett pitches half as good against the Senators today as he did last year, it could be rough. He has a string of 36 shutout innings against the Senators coming into today's game. They knocked him out in the game last May 10th. Knocked him out again on May 27th last year. And then he started pitching shutouts against Washington. The slider is over there for a strike call. He blanked the Senators 7 to nothing on four hits on July 13th. Blanked them on six hits July 17th last year. Blanked them on September 22nd and again on October 3rd. Last time, 12-7 and seven against Washington. Inside fastball. 
Two balls and a strike to Ken McMullen, who comes over from the Dodgers. Patrick Kidding is calling the Senators now the Dodger Farm Club. Gil Hodges is the next Dodger. Don Zimmer, McMullen, Frank Howard, Phil Ortega. Two balls, one strike. One out, nobody on, and no score here in Washington. He swings at a high pitch and fouls it upstairs. The count is two and two. The Red Sox have Yastrzemski in left, Lenny Green in center, Tony Canigliaro in right. Malzone's at third, Petrocelli's at short, Mantilla's at second, Thomas at first. Mambo Kett pitching, Tillman catching. This is the fifth opening game assignment for Bill Mambo Kett. 2-2 the count. The pitch on the way to McMillan. Swings and he hits a foul. That will be in the seats and back of first base. Lee Thomas racing over there but can't get to it. McMillan last year with the Dodgers hit 209 and hit 234 with the Spokane Ball Club. Five opening assignments. Of course, Mel Parnell knows. It's quite an honor to get that opening day assignment. Yes, it is. Uh, it's quite a thrill to be able to pitch also in front of the president and the vice president of the United States. Uh, it's a thrill to all pitchers. It's one that uh, brings many chills before the ball game. Yeah, I don't care how long you're around this game, Mel, or any of these sports. You're not nervous or something wrong with you. Strike three call, a slider. Knee-high corner on the outside corner. Two down. And Bob Chance coming up. Well, the Sounders made some trades. This is a player involved in one of them. They sent Chuck Kenton to the Cleveland Indians for Bob Chance and Woody Hell. Chance is a left-handed batter. As a rookie last year, we thought he was one of the best hitters in the league. He had 279, knocked in 75 runs, and had 14 homers. He's got power. In fact, there's some real power in this Washington ball club. Chance, Howard, Don Locke, Kirkland, Jim King, they've got a lot of power. Two down, nobody on. Mambo overhands a pitch, and it crowds the left-hander. Ball one. Playing him straight away. Bob Chance lives now in Jersey City, New Jersey. Is born in Statesboro, Georgia. And he's still a youngster. He's only 24 years old. The 1-0 pitch to him is a let-up outside, ball two. Two or nothing. Of course, one of the hallmarks of Mambo Kett's pitching is control. He'll usually walk if he's right, only one or two men a game. Last year, he had a disappointing season. After winning 20 the year before, he came back to win 13 last year and lose 14. A 2-0 delivery, swing and a miss on a shoulder-high fastball, two and one. Uh, Mambo just couldn't get straightened out. He had a terrible start. And then the last six weeks of the season, he started the pitch. The Mambo Kid of the year before. So they hope he picks off, picks up where he left off last year. Two balls and a strike to Bob Chance. Two down, nobody on, no score. Last of the first inning. A right-hander strides and comes in. There's a line shot in the left center. There's the first base hit of the season. Lenny Green runs in, picks it up. Chance makes the turn and holds it first. So Chance is on with two outs. And Frank Howard is coming up. Here is probably along with Dick Raddatz, one of the two monstrous men of the major league. Frank Howard weighs 255 pounds, stands six feet seven. He was a basketball star at Ohio State. He got a $105,000 bonus from the Dodgers a few years ago to sign. He lashes it down to Malzone at 30, digs it up, throws to second, in time, four stops. And the Senators are out. That ball was hit hard. On one hop down to Malzone. So the last of the first, Washington had no runs, one hit, there were no errors, and one man left. At the end of the first inning, the score is the Red Sox nothing and the Senators nothing. Every man's taste and face. 
And remember, you don't have to inhale to enjoy. White Owl. Great blend, great taste, great choice of shapes. While you're moving or commuting in your armchair at the World's Fair, things go right when you lie. Coming up now in the second inning with Tony Canigliaro, Lee Thomas, and Felix Mantia facing Phil Ortega. In other openers today, and there are a lot of new things in baseball this year. Usually Monday is left for the presidential opener here in Washington and Cincinnati's opener, but we're having other openers this year on the same day. And New York plays at Minnesota today. at Kansas City, Cleveland, and Los Angeles. Chicago and Baltimore will open tomorrow. There's a long foul down the left field line by Canigliaro out of play. Strike one. Well, all I can say about this boy is he plays somewhat up to what he did in spring training. What a year he should have. Tony Canigliaro. I got a kick out of him. Now we'll talk about it here in a minute. Here's the pitch to Canigliaro. Takes it outside. I was reading a the UPI had a poll of uh, leading sports experts around America about baseball. They still picked it as a national sport. They won one delivery to him inside because also had many young stars, and they said list the young stars, list some of the best players. Twenty-five players mentioned. They didn't even mention this kid, Camiglio. Talk about a young star. I think this kid's got a chance to be one of the greats. Two-one delivery to him. Outside, ball three. But I think Ron Santo paid uh, young Tony a great compliment when he said he was the, the best aggressive young hitter he's ever seen since he's been in baseball. That's quite a compliment. I'll say it is. A 3-1 pitch to Canigliaro. There's a line shot in the left. Base hit for him. Well, Tony is on with a line drive to left. He had 368 in spring training, led the club in homers, RBIs, everything. He doesn't get hurt. Now, that's, that's the thing we uh, yeah, want to watch. He got hit twice, broken arms last year. But I think we'll all watch and see uh, blossoming of a great star in this league. Lee Thomas is up now. Batting left-handed. The pitch to Lee is outside a ball, one and nothing. Back now, I think you could say that uh, Canigliaro and Oliva have a chance to take over. In the next year or two, there's the two great stars in his league. Not that man, uh, man, there he goes. Pitches a strike. Here's a throw. It's wide. He's safe. Canigliaro steals second. Wide throw by Brumley to Brinkman. But uh, Tony had a great jump on Ortega. So he's on second base. With a count one and one to Lee Thomas. The outfield playing Thomas straight away. No score, second inning. Ortega overhands the pitch, it's outside, ball two. Two and one. Thomas, of course, came over to the Red Sox in that trade with the Angels last year that sent Luke Clinton to Los Angeles. Played right field, had some troubles out there. The 2 1 pitch. A ground ball hit down to first. Canigliaro's holding at second. Chance throws to Ortega covering, and there's one out. on the ground to the right side and Canigliaro held a second. Felix Mantia is up now with his very surprising 30 home runs last year. And everybody's wondering if he can match that performance. He thinks he'll do all right. He doesn't predict how many homers he'll hit. He predicts he'll hit a few. Runner on second, one out. Ortega's pitching to Mantilla. It's low for a ball, one and nothing. We had a lot of newspapers suddenly blowing out on the field. It's, it's gusty today. This is a circular stadium. Complete circle, and it is protected by the wind uh, somewhat. The 1-0 pitch. Swings late and fouls it off. One ball, one strike. 
Uh, in the National League today, the uh, Dodgers are playing at uh, New York against the Mets. San Francisco is at Pittsburgh, Milwaukee at Cincinnati, St. Louis at Chicago, and Philadelphia at Houston in a night game. Luckily, I guess, in Houston, it's a night game. I'm letting you see the ball in the daytime there. The sunshine. That'll be the first time a game's ever been postponed because of sunshine. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. A high fly and a shallow left. Frank Howard's looking up in that mean sun, waiting for it, under it, and takes it. Canigliaro holds it second. And we have two down. Better now, Frank Nell's on. Old Man River, who's done that dependable day in, day out, year in, year out job for the Red Sox. At the age of 34, starting another season in Boston. I'm going to give Frank some rest this year now and then. Probably uh, spelling with pursue and uh, move things around. Figure if he can play 125, 30 games, he'll, with some rest, that he'll be an even better performer. And maybe can prolong his career a bit uh, longer. The pitch to him, inside, a ball, one and nothing. Bob Tillman on deck. Canigli Arrows on second, two down. No score in the top half of the second. The outfield playing Malzone deep and toward left. A stretch by Ortega. In he comes with it. It's low, a ball, two and nothing. Two balls, no strikes. We have no game tomorrow. The two teams will be playing here on Wednesday. And then we'll be home to open the season next Saturday against the Baltimore Orioles. Two and all the count. The pitch. Outside, ball three. Three and nothing now to Malzone. Incidentally, Jerry Vale will sing the national anthem, popular recording star next Saturday. Arthur Fiegler will conduct uh, some colorful ceremonies in the first Saturday opener in the history of the American League at Fenway Park next Saturday. Baltimore, good ball club. Baltimore and the Red Sox. The stretch, 3-0 pitch, ball four. Our first walk of the season. The Negleros at second. Now Zones at first. There are two down. And Bob Tillman up. Bob didn't hit much in spring training. He had a rough time. He had a good season last year, though, and uh, developed into one of the better catchers in the American League. They're hoping he can repeat this year. Bob hit 278 last year with 17 homers, 61 RBIs. Swing sends a ground ball to shortstop. Brinkman boots the ball. Can't make a play any play. Brinkman booted it. And the bases are loaded. Canigliero's on third. Malzone's on second. Bob Tillman's at first. An easy hopping ball that just as Brinkman went to scoop up, it rolled up his arm and he dropped it and he couldn't make a play. Well, here's Bill Marbuquette's first chance to help himself at the plate. He's not much of a hitter, but he's a good punter. Two down. You think you might put a squeeze on? I doubt it at this time. Right. Uh, those swinging pitches are dangerous. Now ball back, strike one. I would say that Bill's looking for the good fastball now, and he had a good cut at the last one. As long as you're swinging, you're a threat, and Bill is certainly doing that. Bases loaded two outs for the Red Sox. Top half the second. One strike on him. Ball up high, one and one. Well, I said a squeeze with two outs very unlikely, but well, let's face facts because this, this guy is the greatest hitting pitcher in the world, as Jimmy G used to say. <laughs> well, but as long as he's playing, he's dangerous, Kurt. One ball, one strike to Mambuquet. Petrocelli's on deck. Here comes the pitch. It's outside, ball two, two and one. And now the hometown Washington fans are starting to mumble a bit. Two balls, one strike. Base is loaded two away. Second inning, no score. Mambo waiting. Ortega tries to pop this one right in there, and he misses. Low and away for ball three. He thought he had it over. Three balls and one strike. Three and one. It's a tough situation. Base is loaded, two down for a pitcher, and this is the spot that you have to throw the strike in. Here it is. Strike two calls. 
And here's our first three and two, the big one do situation of the year. Two down, runners will be going on the pitch. The bases are loaded. Ortega into the windup. There go the runners, and the pitch is swung on and foul back. Count stays three and two to Bill Mambuquet. Canigliero opened the inning with a single. He stole second. Thomas grounded out. Mantilla popped up. Malzon walked. And Ed Brinkman booted Bob Tillman's easy ground ball to load the bases. And now Ortega's run the count to three and two against Bill Mambo Kett. A walk could give Mambo here the first RBI of the season. Here comes the delivery. It is ball strike call. He's out. Mambo started across the way to bat us on the inside corner. And Ortega gets out of the jam. In the second inning, the Red Sox had no runs. One hit. There was one Washington air and three men left. At the end of an inning and a half, the score, Red Sox nothing and the Senators nothing. After eating, picture taking, coffee breaking, things go right when you lie up at the white Barbecuing or curling, double dating. White Owl Winner's Circle, the New Yorker, the big cigar for the big moments. And you don't have to inhale to enjoy. Created in honor of the World's Fair, White Owl New Yorker. While you're moving or commuting in your armchair at the World's Fair, things go right when you lie. Going to the last half of the second inning, Don Locke, Willie Kirkland, and Mike Brumley will be up for the Senators against Mambo Cat. Of the opening day pitcher schedule, we have only uh, Mambo Cat, Al Jackson of the Mets, Larry Jackson of the Cubs. Juan Marichal of the Giants, Bob Beal of the Pirates, and Gary Peters of the White Sox, who had the honor of pitching opening days last year, who will repeat this year. We have three new managers in the American League, five new managers in the National League, and baseball will be played indoors for the first time tonight. That is Major League Baseball and championship games. Don Locke, big power boy, hit 248 last year with 28 homers. Right-handed batter takes inside a ball, one or nothing. Locke has had a brilliant spring training. They're predicting his greatest season this year. The outfield playing in deep and toward left. Here's the pitch to him. He swings and misses on a low slider. One ball, one strike. Each team has had one hit. Chance singling for the Senators and Tony Canigliaro for the Red Sox. A 1-1 delivery. There's a long drive. Forget about that one. It is gone. Upper deck home run. in the upper deck. And that ended 37 shutout innings that Mambo Kett had pitched against Washington, 36 last year and one this year. He tagged what looked like a wayside fastball in the upper deck and left field. He had President Johnson and Vice President Humphrey up on their feet applauding him as he trotted into the dugout. Strike call the knees to Willie Kirkland. So the Sounders are out in front, one to nothing. Well, we can see what they mean, Mel, about a lot. They're going to have a great year. They think he'll hit 40 home runs this year. That's just about as far as a man can hit a ball. Pitch is low inside. The wall at that point is 381, and that ball traveled into the upper deck, which puts it well over 400 feet. 
It was quite a belt. It was a waist high fastball, and Locke got the good fat part of the bat on it, and the ball traveled for great distance. Willie Kirkland up. Nobody on, nobody out. Left handed batter. Ball two. They've changed him all around this year. He's a fellow that um, hits for power, but he's been hitting for a low average the last two or three years. He had 212 last year. He used to be with the Indians. Two and one to Kirkland. Mike Brumley is on deck. Time calls. Kirkland has something in his eye, I believe. Now, trying to get back in there. One to nothing. Washington ahead. Last half the second inning. Now he steps out again. And umpire Joe Paparella is going to try and do a little doctoring. Here comes the trainer of the Senators out in the field. And while they uh, try and remove something in his right eye, we'll take time for station identification. This is the Red Sox Baseball Network. You're listening to WAAB, AM and FM in Worcester, Massachusetts. Fun radio at 1440 on the dial. The time is 2 o'clock, the temperature 42 degrees. In action here, the 2 1 pitch is outside to Willie Kirkland. Ball three. Bases are empty, nobody out. Three and one to Kirkland. That home run seems to have shaken Mambo Kid up a bit. Here's the pitch, it is ball four. He walked him. So Kirkland's on. And the batter is catcher Mike Brumley. So we had 244 last year. Not much power. Had two homers. He sprays the ball around. He hits a lot to left center and left field. And that's where they're playing him right now. Lee Thomas holding at first base against Kirkland. Ed Brinkman is on deck. Working out of the stretch. Mambo catch pitch. Strike call. Nothing a one to Mike Brumley. Eddie Yost is coaching a third. And Joe Pignatano at first, former uh, catcher with the Dodgers. Here's the delivery. Then there, a strike call. Throw to first. They're just getting back as Kirkland. Fairly close play at first base. Mambo Kett now is ahead of Brumley. Two strikes. Kirkland playing it safe at first. The stretch. Pitch on the way. Strike three called a good fastball on the inside corner to letter. Strikeout number two for Mambo Kett. One out for the Washington Senators here in the second. And the batter now is Ed Brinkman, the shortstop. Batting right-handed. With Phil Ortega, two up next. Washington leading here, one to nothing, on Don Locke's tremendous home run in the last half of the second inning. Mambo checks his runner at first. Pitch is in there, a strike call. Four strikes in a row now delivered by Mambo Kett. Nothing and one. They're playing Brinkman, who hit 224 last year as a pull hitter to left field. One strike on him. Mambo kept pitching. A breaking pitch dips down and in. A ball, one and one. A fan sitting along third base way and left field and out on the center field uh, upper deck bleachers are out in the brilliant sunshine today. While in back of home plate and along first base and right field, they're in the shadows. A 1-1 pitch. There goes the runner. It's a swing and a miss. Tillman's throw to Petrocelli. Out at second base. Kirkland is thrown out on a good throw by Tillman. Petrocelli took the throw and made the tag. It was a swing and a miss. By Ed Brinkman trying to protect the runner. Well, Tillman throws out the first runner trying to go down on him this year. Two down for Washington. Base is empty. And our count to Ed Brinkman is two and two. Man 
Tia comes in and says something to uh, Mambo Cat in his Latin English accent. Speaks English. Oh, I love to hear him talk. He's got a uh, very attractive accent. Speaks English very well. 2-2 two, two the count. Pitch. Try to curve. It's outside for ball three. Three and two. Al Walker's first weather report of the year. Temperature is 81 degrees here in Washington. 81. How about that on opening day? Humidity is only 18%. Usually it's very humid here, but this is one of the most comfortable days I could ever remember being here in Washington. Three and two to Ed Brinkman, and the wind's 25 miles an hour. There's a ground ball tapped out to second baseman Mantilla. He digs it up, throws to first, Senators are out. They had one run on a leadoff homer by Don Locke. One hit, there were no errors, nobody left. Score at the end of two innings, Washington won, and the Red Sox nothing. Opening day at Fenway Park next Saturday afternoon. Baltimore and the Red Sox. 2.15 is game time. Jerry Vale will sing the national anthem. Arthur Fiedler will be conducting. We have colorful opening ceremonies. Harvard Band will start entertaining at 1.45. With the Harvard Band playing the national anthem. Why not make plans to be on hand the next Saturday when the Orioles and the Red Sox open the American League season in Boston? I think that Saturday's a, a good opening date for you. Take your family. And also remember the Orioles will be there on Easter Sunday and then uh, next Monday, Washington's in town for a Patriots Day doubleheader starting at 1.30. We'll see you at Fenway Park next Saturday afternoon. Well, what do you think about the first two innings, Mel? So far we've seen great pitching on the part of Phil Ortega with his fast sinker and Billy Mamboquette mixing speed. Billy, of course, threw the one fastball about bell tied to Don Locke, and Don hit it out of the ballpark with a tremendous clout. The infield is playing very slow, and we notice that the infielders are moving in a step or two on the fast runner. The outfield also is playing slow due to the recent rains in the Washington area. Now back to Kurt Gowdy. Now I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, ground ball hit through the infield. They're not rolling much. Somebody might try and go for two in, the, in this game, especially with the tight one in the late inning. Yes, it's possible because the ball isn't rolling too good in the outfield. Here's Petrocelli up, swings and misses on a fastball for strike one. Petrocelli struck out his first time. This is the top of the Red Sox batting order. Petrocelli, Lenny Green, and Carl Yastrzemski. Third inning. Ortega right hands the pitch over for a strike call, a fastball, nothing in two. One run, two hits, one error for the Senators, no runs, one hit, no errors for the Red Sox. Petrocelli in a hole, two strikes. The pitch to him. A curve low and inside, a ball, one and two. The uh, Washington fans had... Uh, and had a treat yesterday. The Dodgers were in here for a three-game exhibition series. Sandy Koufax came on to pitch in the fifth inning yesterday. The one-two delivery. He goes for a bad pitch and strikes out. Way over his head. Brumley drops the ball, picks it up, throws the chance at first. So Petrocelli, over-anxious, strikes out on a pitch up around his eyes. That's twice in a row he struck out. One out, nobody on, and Lenny Green, the batter. Uh, Koufax came in with all the publicity about arthritis, and he may be done. He faced ten batters and struck out five. Here's the delivery. It's in there, strike call. I don't believe there's much doubt about it. Healthy, here's the greatest pitcher in baseball, Koufax. Twice he struck out 18 men in the game. Nobody's ever done that. Three no-hitters in a row, three successive seasons. One strike to Lenny Green. Third baseman playing shallow on him. There's a little tapper hit down to that third baseman drawn in. McMullen throws to first, and Green is out. Two down in the third inning. And so far, the top of the order has a sniff or take Two down, nobody on, and Carl Yastrzemski is up. Tony Canigliaro will be on deck. 
pitch passes in the dirt up against the screen. Ball one. One to nothing. Washington leading on Don Locke's tremendous homer in the last half of the second. Ortega winds and throws. Yastrzemski takes it outside. Ball two. Two to nothing. Two balls, no strikes. Yastrzemski had a good spring training also, hitting well over 300. Here's the 2-0 delivery. And he takes that one high for ball three. Three and nothing now. Ortega walked Malzone in the second. That's his only walk so far. They just changed the count. It's wrong on the scoreboard. And umpire Paparella signals. Now the 3-0 delivery. He bores that one over for a strike call. Three and one. Of course, Mel, early, you're always suspect of these uh, starting pitchers early in the year of going nine innings. Well, that's true. Uh, of course, if they get enough work in spring training, it'll help. There's ball four. Of course, with the many pitchers in spring training, it's uh, rather difficult to get all of your pitchers in to get enough work to get the start of the season. Of course, if you encounter bad weather in the early part of the season, it makes it very troublesome for your pitching staff. Our take at the present time is throwing very strongly. He appears to be very deceptive. He has a, a curled wrist action, which can be very deceiving to the hitter. All right, here's Cadigliaro up. He's had the only hit for the Red Sox. There's a little looper. May drop right center. It's in a base hit. Yastrzemski's coming on to third. And Canigliaro now is two for two as he drops it into shallow right center. He hit that one off the end of the bat and dunked it out in the right center, but it's a base hit. So the Red Sox had the base it loaded in the second, failed to score. Now they have runners on first and third here in the third. With two down. Both times with two down. Their threat has come up. Lee Thomas grounded out to the first baseman his first time. Each team now has two hits. Felix Manti is on deck. Ortega with a stretch, working to Thomas. Swings and fouls a fastball back out of play, strike one. Kremski at third, Canigliaro at first, two away. What a way to start a season for Canigliaro, Mal, two for two. Seems as though Tony brought that hot bat along from spring training. He had a very good spring training, hit the ball well throughout the entire training season. And, of course, uh, in this ball game, he's two for two. Appears that Tony's off to a good start and will have a good year. Here's the one strike pitch to Thomas. There's a high pop foul. Off to the left, Rumley's chasing it and can't get to it. It drops in about five or six rows right down below us. See uh, Dick O'Connell, the Red Sox vice president, Jack Hayes, partner of Bingham, Dana, and Gould, and attorney for the Red Sox. At least we have Tom Dowd down there. We've got some Red Sox rooters here. That's Senator Kennedy here today rooting for the Red Sox, too. I guess... Uh, President Johnson probably rooting for Washington, huh? Pitch is high for a ball, one and two. One ball, two strikes. Funny thing about this town, there's so many uh, transits live here, come from all over, that um, they always, many of them come out and root for the visiting ball club. The government work. Here's the stretch now, the one-two delivery. There's a long belt by Thomas, hit deep. That ball is going, going, it is gone. A home run for Lee Thomas over the scoreboard in right center. And the Red Sox are out in front by a score of three to one. Two down. Yastrzemski walks to Niglier, a single to right, and Lee Thomas belts a home run. Just the scoreboard in a narrow area just under the upper deck out there over the 378 mark. 3-1. And uh, two homers have provided all the scoring. And T is up now. He flied out his first time. And that bases on ball started it. Pitches outside with two down. Ortega walks his fancy. Boy, those walks will get you in trouble. They'll do it every time, Kurt. That's uh, one of the things that pitches hate but can do very little about. Pitch is low. And we may have a little action springing up here in the Washington bullpen. Do an order, man, to you. Malzone on deck. Red Sox ahead now, 3-1. to one. Ortega.
Ortega working. Mantilla takes low. Ortega having troubles uh, finding home plate. Gil Hodges uh, during out there to that bullpen. He'll be anxiously watching Ortega here. This kid got a $75,000 bonus four years ago by the Dodgers, Ortega. Mantilla goes after and misses. He was born in Adobe Hut. Little town of Gilbert, Arizona, just outside Mesa. He's a Yaqui Indian of Mexican descent. Never quite did it with the Dodgers, although he still uh, has a lot of promise with a good arm he has. The pitch. There's a long belt by Mantilla. That ball riding deep, and it is gone. A home run by Mantilla into the Red Sox bullpen over the 381 mark. And the Red Sox are out in front by a score of 4-1 to as Elgato, the cat Mantilla, Picks up where he left off last year. Mantia hit three homers here last year. He only hit 30 last year, more in one year last year, than he'd ever hit in all his major league career. And he starts opening day here. So Thomas and Mantia now have back-to-back home runs. Red Sox ahead, 4-1. to one. And a little blasting game's coming in to talk to Ortega. And the batter is Frank Malzone. Bob Tillman is on deck. Malzone walked his first time up. Ortega's pitch is high and away, ball one. One and nothing. Both uh, Thomas and Mantia hit his fastball. Here's the 1 0 pitch. It's outside for ball two. Two and nothing. No strikes. Now the wind up and delivery. Foul ball back out of play. Two and one to Mel Zone. Three homers already in this ball game. Actually, Mel, this is a good ballpark to hit home runs in. Says that the ball will carry if you get it up high. Down low, the ball seems to die some. Sink. Malzahn hit the changeup, pops it up in the shallow left. They had him off balance. Brinkman backs up and takes it. And sides up, but the Red Sox had four runs in the third inning on three hits. No Washington errors, nobody left. Score at the end of two and a half. Red Sox four, Senators one. Hitters on the ball club this spring. 
Came over from the National League and uh, won himself a home right here in Washington. Been a good leadoff man for them. Chokes up about an inch on the back. Malzone comes in a couple of steps with blasting game up there. Don is a good a good putter. Curveball breaks in and over, calls strike one. Mel, you were talking earlier about uh, the 1952 Open. I saw that game in Old Griffith Stadium when I was living down here. I remember it. Yeah, that was great memories. And it's when uh, Pierce Hall was playing short, wasn't he? That's right. Jimmy Pierce Hall had shot stuff for us. Fastball is outside, and the count is one and one. They had uh, Lepsey over and Faith Thronberry and a few of those uh, younger boys. Right, and at the time, Lou Boudreau was experimenting with Jimmy Pearsall. He thought that Jimmy would have great range as an infielder and moving to the shortstop position. Of course, later, Jimmy found his way back out to the outfield. He sure did. There's a blooper in the shallow center field, bringing Lenny Green on in a hurry. Lenny's there. He makes the catch. Green had to come away in towards second base, but he made the catch about 40 feet back of second base, and there are two away. Here's Ken McMullen, third baseman for the Senators, formerly with the Dodgers. He took a third strike in the first inning. This is the Dodger alumni over here this year. Boy, they've got them all over the place, including their coaches now. It's Pignatano. A fellow named Dick Nen, who... Uh, was in the minors last year, but got a very important hit for them two years ago. Called strike on uh, the hitter, McMullen. There's this ball club is confusing for me to look at after seeing these many fellows with the Dodgers. And, of course, as you mentioned, Pignatana in the coaching box. They're just about all over this ballpark. Well, since Hodges came here, he's been uh, on a pipeline from Los Angeles. Called strike to McMullen. Count 0-2. Gill, the old Dodger, and uh, I imagine has a little thing working with Buzzy Pavese out there. He'd say, all right, uh, if you don't want him, give him to me, and we'll build here. Well, it has helped this Washington ball club quite a bit. It's going to be a good club to watch this year. They're, uh, they're exciting. they got power. Fastball moves inside. The count on Ken McMullen. There's one ball, two strikes. I tell you, they say Locke can hit 40. Well, uh, if Howard ever gets on track, this is not a bad park for him either. He may hit 50. That big fella. Mambo catch delivers, and it's just high and inside. Two balls, two strikes. Ned talking about Howard. Uh, what a problem he presents to the opposing pitcher. Size alone is enough to scare you. Yeah, but he's got a great strike zone, hasn't he? He has, but uh, he covers that strike zone pretty well with that big bat of his. Well, they say, Mel. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. The pitch to McMullen is foul down the right field line going out of play. We're talking to some of the Washington writers and uh, John McLean, the Washington broadcaster, said, what kind of spring did Howard have? And he said, well, it's not been good. He hit only one home run. He said he's been over a swing, which has been his trouble all along. Anybody with that kind of power can do it just normally without uh, overdoing it. He's a confusing hitter, Ned. You can fool him with slow stuff, and yet he can reach out and with that tremendous power hit the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, he's, he's very tough to pitch to. Because, uh, you just uh, don't know what to do, what to throw at any particular time to, to get him out. McMullen lifts one high in the air to left center field. Yastrzemski having trouble with the sun is over there, but he's got on to the ball and makes the catch in left center. McMullen popping out to Carl Yastrzemski and it's the one, two, three inning for Bill Marboquette as he gets the Senators in order in the third. Score at the end of three innings is the Red Sox four and the Senators one. Say, does the smoking scene look a little cloudy to you? Well, take heart. There's a bright spot. It's the White Owl Miniature Cigar. The White Owl Miniature is a mild cigar, small enough to smoke when you're pressed for time, and yet big enough so you won't be tempted to inhale. And the tobaccos in the White Owl Miniature are aged for years to give you unusual mildness and taste, with an aroma that's always welcome. Smoking a White Owl Miniature is a relaxing pleasure and not a nervous habit. You know, the poet Thackeray wrote that cigars are, quote, a kind companion, a gentle stimulant, a cementer of friendship. You know that? Well, today you can call the White Owl Miniature your kind companion. So make the switch to White Owl Miniature, the bright spot in the smoking picture. Buy 
that pack, just 28 cents. Trainings have gone by, and the Red Sox have four runs on four hits, played errorless ball. Washington, one run, two hits, and one error. Let's see what we have on the White Owl scoreboard. In the National League, the Giants and Pirates are scoreless at the end of three innings. Marischal against Veal. That's the only other game that's underway right now. Bob Tillman leads off for the Red Sox as we move to the top of the fourth. Tilly reached on an error in the second inning. Error by Brinkman, the shortstop. Tillman takes a strike from Ortega. The count is one ball, one strike. As Kirk pointed out, Tilly had a tough spring. He hit about 190 which was in complete uh, contrast to his spring a year ago. Ground ball hits the third on the changeup, gobbled up by McMullen, is tossed a chance in plenty of time, and Tillman is out. One away, third to first, and Mambo Kett coming to the plate. But they expect, uh, Billy Herman says, uh, Tillman made himself a hitter last year, and he has no doubt that uh, Bob will be up there around the 280-290 mark, as he was most of last season. Mambo Kett took a third strike his first time up. Ortega's pitch to him is in there, called strike one. He just joined us. Washington scored first on Don Locke's homer into the upper deck in the second. Mambo reaches for one and taps it on the ground to the right side. Blasting game up with it at second, throws him out by a step. That was a grass cutter, not hard hit. Two away. The Red Sox scored all four runs in the third when with two out, Yastrzemski walked, Canigliaro got his second single, then Thomas hit a three-run homer, followed by Mantilla's bases empty homer. And it's been the long ball that's brought it to the Red Sox. Here's Rico Petroselli. Struck out twice, he swings at the first pitch, strike one. Rico, who uh, won himself an opening day job with his work afield, Considered a step or two faster than Bursu. Still has to uh, hit big league pitching. Hit 170 in spring training. Has a foul off the end of the bat. 0-2. But I think you're going to like this fellow around short at Fenway. He has great range. Gets the ball away quick. And has provided uh, a lot of us with uh, short stopping. That uh, will take its place with uh, Versalles, uh, Kubek, this fellow here, Brinkman. Anybody in the American League, as far as the, the mechanics around the position are concerned in the field. Pitch is inside, ball one, one and two. Ned Rico has great balance and great range, good quick hands. He makes the tough play look routine, and it's really something to see to watch this young fellow move around the infield. One, two pitch to him, moves outside. Two. Well, he's uh, trying to get the feel at the plate, too, Mel, by switch hitting, and he's batting left now against Ortega. He came into baseball as strictly a right-handed hitter. 2-2 delivery. Jumps him back from the plate. Ball three. Bob Gibson goes for the Cardinals this afternoon against Larry Jackson of the Cubs. The Dodgers lead the Mets 2-0 after one inning in their ball game. Cincinnati and Milwaukee. Cloninger will go for Milwaukee and O'Toole for Cincinnati. 3-2 delivery to Petroselli foul back and Rico hangs in there three balls, two strikes now against Lager Beer your host for the middle innings my neighbor, have against it 21st year of sponsorship of Red Sox baseball for Narragansett Ortega gets another baseball the Arizona Indian youngster looks in for the sign from Mike Brumley. Winds and fires 3-2. It's fouled at the plate by Petroselli, who hangs tough. Billy Gardner coaching down at third base for the Red Sox, and Len Oakry is coaching at first. Oakry uh, coming in from the bullpen to fill in for Pete Runnels, who had an ulcer operation recently down in uh, Pasadena, Texas. Pete will be rejoining the club in another, another month or so. Ortega with the full count pitch once again. He misses this time, and Petroselli waits him out for a walk. While he trots the first, let's pause for a station break. This is the Red Sox Baseball Network. D 
NBC Stadium. Red Sox with a man on and two outs. The batter is Lenny Green. He looks at the first pitch up high, ball one. Red Sox ahead, four to one. We're in the top of the fourth. Petroselli with a walk is at first base. Ortega bends in for the sign. Here it goes. There goes the runner. High for a ball. Throw to second. Petroselli slides. He is out. Brinkman slaps the tag on him. Play going from the catcher to the shortstop covering. And the attempted steal backfires. That's all for the Red Sox. This is WAAB, AM and FM, Worcester, Massachusetts. So three and a half innings is the Red Sox four and Washington one. Well, 21 years ago, Narragansett Lagavera started sponsoring Red Sox baseball. A lot of faces on the field have changed since then. But the famous straight from the barrel taste in each and every drop of Narragansett Lagavera is as refreshing as ever. That's a taste that people have come to know and enjoy for many, many years. So have a glass of beer that's bringing you all the action, excitement, thrills of Red Sox baseball for the 21st straight year. We mentioned earlier there are some Red Sox fans here. One of them is Senator Edward Kennedy, who is here rooting for the Red Sox today, and uh, we asked him to come up and uh, say hello to you all. And First of all, how are you feeling, Senator? Good. I want to uh, very, very well. It's a delightful day down here, and I'm glad to be up uh, with you. I remember your uh, being up with you last uh, last year, the opening game, the home game of the Red Sox, when uh, Tom Yorkie and the Red Sox organization were kind enough to uh, give the proceeds to the uh, Kennedy Library. So I'm a great fan, always have been, and uh, good to be up here on opening day. That's right, and I told uh, Billy Herman you'd be here today, and he said, well, wish him luck. And I said, well, maybe you want to wish Billy luck, too. Oh, I certainly do. I I think uh, they certainly have uh, got a lot of hustle and zip today and great hitting power. I think it's going to be a, a great year. I always enjoy following them. We don't always get the chance to get out here, but uh, we've got a great start of the season. I have... Uh, You'd think that I might have some split loyalties today, being in Washington and playing the Senators, but it's uh, no problem for me. Good. Thank you very much, Thank Senator you, Kennedy. Glad to see you're feeling better and stronger every day. And we're ready to go now in the last of the fourth inning. And, uh, Ned, you all set here with Mom will get pitching. First pitch by Bill Mom Bouquet is swung on and missed as Bob Chance takes the first cut. Chance got a single left field. Got the first hit of the season, actually. Dumped the single in there in the first inning. Left-handed hitter, and he takes the pitch outside. One ball, one strike. I remember very well the opener that Senator Kennedy was talking about last year at Fenway when everybody came and watched the Red Sox beat the White Sox. Line drive to left field. Chance may get more than one on this one. The ball sinks in the grass. Picked up by Yasemski. Chance trying for two. The throw is not quite in time as he beats the tag by Mantia. Yasemski almost nailed him at second base. Mantia, I don't believe, knew that Chance was going to uh, be coming in there. Felix was off the bag and then made a belated dive for him. And Chance slid in under the throw, which was a good one by Yaz for a two-base hit. So that's two for two for Bob Chance. That ball ordinarily, Mel, would have gone all the way to the fence, but on this day, it just died in that grass out there. That's right. The slow outfield killed the ball. Stahl had to come in on the ball and make a, a fair hand pickup and a quick throw to second base. The throw was just to the right of the bag. Chance slid to the left of the bag and just didn't get on the, in under the tag by Mantia. So the Senators are cooking something here with a man in second, nobody out, and the batter is Mike Howard. Big Hondo, as they call him. The Dodgers called him. This is a menacing-looking man, I tell you. Facially, he resembles Arnold early a little bit of the Red Sox. Pitches inside and high to him, ball one. A man with this power can be fooled easily, but the brute power makes up for the many mistakes that he may make in, in trying to attack the pitch. You remember seeing that World Series on television a couple of years ago at home where he hit in L.A. against Whitey Ford? I think it was. Maybe it was somebody else, but uh, nobody's ever matched that one. Pitches down low and outside. 
2-0. and oh. He had a tremendous double or triple against Ford in Yankee Stadium, which was out near the flagpole and all the monuments there. And then he went to Los Angeles, and he hit one into the upper deck, which hovers over the bullpen in Chavez Ravine. And uh, that's about as far as anybody has hit that ball in that ballpark. He's a shotgun up there. This spring, they say, though, he's been hitting the top of the ball. He's hit everything on the ground. Mambo gets delivery. Breaks outside. Ball three. Mambo being careful. Now it has such tremendous size. The bat looks like a toothpick in his hand. <laughs> Ends up kind of like uh, Boog Powell from the other side. Powell of Baltimore. Makes that bat look little. Howard had only one spring training home run. That was hit in Mexico City. Moore waits in his shoes for a couple of weeks to try to... He took off 30 pounds of weight, and that's no mean feat. He takes ball four. Senators have runners at first and second. Nobody out. That was the second walk off Mambo. Tillman out to talk to Mom Boquette. And the hitter is Don Locke, who drilled one into the upper deck in the second inning for the Senators' run. 28 home runs last year for this fella. Steve Ridzik, a right-hander, is throwing now in the Senator bullpen. If it gets down as far as the pitcher this inning in the batting order, they may hit for Ortega. Locke crouched to the plate. Chance and Howard lead away, and the first pitch is a call strike one. Frank Howard at first base. We're saying he took off 30 pounds. Came in weighing 274, way overweight. And now it's 248, 250, which still is big. He worked very hard to get himself in shape. Bob Chance leads away from second. Howard with a big lead off first. Locke hits one up in the air, sky high to shallow center. Lenny Green looking up, waiting for it. Makes the catch. The runners hold as the throw comes into Petroselli. Locke flies to center. There's one down. <laughs> Willie Kirkland... He walked in the second inning and was cut down trying to steal a moment later. Nice to see the slim, trim Al Walker here again with us this year. He's gone into his annual diet and is down to 248 himself. Kirkland batting from the left side. Chance off second, Howard off first. Mambo comes to the belt. His pitch is lofted high into the infield, back of the plate now. Now it's being called infield fly. Malzon drops the ball, throws to second. Mantia tags everybody and it's out. Look, looked like an infield fly rule was called first. Malzon dropped the ball. It started out in foul ground behind home plate. The wind dropped it over. Field fly rule was called by plate umpire Paparella. Although Malzon dropped the ball, it doesn't make any difference. The batter is out. He threw to second base. And the runner at second chance is off the base. He was tagged out, and it's a double play. That's the way it goes. Infield fly rule called with a batter out. And the runner, at his own risk, chance taking the runner off the base, so he is out. The end of four innings, it's Boston four runs, four hits, no errors. Washington one run, three hits, and one error. Leading off for the Red Sox is Lenny Green, and coming back in is Kurt Gowdy. Well, the fans are still buzzing about that double play. And uh, so many times a year we get questions on the infield fly rule, and we just saw a good example of it there. Lenny Green's up. He takes a slow curve for a strike call from Phil Ortega. With runners on first and second, or first, second, and third, less than two outs. The batter hits what in the judgment of an umpire is a fly ball that can be handled by an infielder. The batter is automatically out, and runners advance at their own risk. A swing and a miss. Strike two. 
So Kirkland hit the pop-up. He was automatically out when the umpire called infield fly rule of fair. And Bob Chance, who was on first after Malzone dropped the ball, ran down the second and threw to Mantilla, who first stepped on the back and then tagged him. A two-strike pitch. Had a drive hit right down the right field line. Let's see if it's fair. It's a fair ball bouncing in the corner. And the see, dog just cleared the fence. It just cleared the fence for a home run for Lenny Green. The stands jut around in the corner, and we couldn't see the ball in the corner. We saw it bounce in the over the fence, and didn't know whether it cleared the fence or bounced over with the way the stands jut out and obscure our view in that corner. A home run for Lenny Green, right down the line. You can't hit him down the line any truer than that. That was fair by about a foot. And that's the third home run for the Red Sox in this game. Pitch is outside, ball one. The Red Sox lead now by a score of five to one. Green is homered. Lee Thomas has hit a three-run homer. Felix Manti is homered. And Igliero's on deck. Pitch is low. Ball two to uh, Carl Yastrzemski. Now you can see why Lenny Green worked his way into the starting lineup. Like he was going to be a minor leaguer and... Uh, he came into spring training, worked hard, had a great spring training, and now gets in a home run here in the opening game. Their pitch is outside, ball three to Yastrzemski, who is grounded out and walked. Steve Ridzik is warming up in the senator bullpen. Three balls and no strikes. Here's the pitch. Ball four, it's low. Yastrzemski's on. And Tony Canigliaro's coming up. Nigel Arrow, single to left, he single to right, he's two for two. And Lenny Green, you couldn't pull a ball down that line like that any uh, better, Mel. Lenny's a real aggressive hitter. He attacks the pitcher all the way. He goes out after that fastball, and of course, in that case, he did the same thing. He went out, got the fastball, pulled it down the right field line. That ball went right into the corner, just over the 335 sign. There goes the runner to slow ball for a strike, a high throw. And safe at second is Yastrzemski with a stolen base. Billy Herman really has him running. That's two stolen bases in the game. Canigliaro in the second, Yastrzemski here in the fifth. Petrocelli was thrown out trying to get out in the fourth. But he has him moving. So we have a runner on second. That takes off the double play situation, fourth double play. And Iguero hits a little roller down toward third. Ortega picks it up with a bare hand. He's out at close play at first base. Over to third goes Yastrzemski. Ortega ran off the mound, picked that, up, that one up with his uh, throwing hand and got him on a very close play at first base. One out, Yastrzemski's on third. And Lee Thomas up. Thomas grounded out in the second. Bell with a three-run homer in the third to right field. to one. Red Sox ahead here in the top of the fifth inning. Felix Manti on deck. Infield in. There's a sharp grounder to second. Flashing game. Looks. Yastrzemski back to third and makes the play over to first and it's two down. Now Thomas couldn't get the ball up in the air that time. Two down. Yastrzemski still on third. Felix Manti up. is flying out and hit a home run. The Red Sox broke their own home run record last year. They belted 186 homers. Second in the majors. They led the league in hitting all year, but finished eighth. Billy Herman, knowing this, has tried to improve the team defensively, add more speed. Today we've seen two stolen bases. I think they stole how many? 18 all of last year or something? Swing and a miss. Looks like a little bit different type of attack. And one that's going to help, especially defensively. No substitute for speed in any sport. One strike to Mantilla. Stremski on third, two down. There's a high fly down the left field line. Frank Howard chasing it over by the stands. He doesn't have a play on it. It's a foul ball. Fans were contesting Howard for the ball down the left field line. So the count to Mantilla now is two strikes. Cliff Owen 
of the Atlantic Refining Company in Philadelphia. He always thinks of us every year at the start of the season. And it to us. Here's the pitch. Inside. Ball one. Here's one on your 15th year with the Red Sox. Hope that you have happiness and the gladness we had together. Good luck for another season. Your pal, Johnny Orlando. A delivery. Ground ball to third. Look at us, Ken McMullen. Fires to first. Mantilla's out and the Red Sox are retired. In the fifth inning, one run for the Red Sox. One hit, a home run by Lenny Green. There were no errors, a one-man left. Well, we've gone halfway in the opening game of the 1965 season, and the score is the Red Sox 5 and the Senators 1. Hi, Neil. Hot and thirsty? I brought you a glass of Narragansett Lager beer. The beer that gives you that famous straight from the barrel taste. Lady. The taste that people who really know beer like that. Oh, good grief. Gansett, light but not too light. Good heavens. The television cameras are on you. How about taking a sip of Gansett beer and telling us how you feel about it? Lady, you're in the middle of the outfield in a game. And they don't seem to be any balls from this side. There might be. I'm playing a game, madam. You've got... Sorry, Mike. The Narragansett people would like to know how you feel about this beer. And madam, you've got to get out of here. This is terrible. This is never... Oh, may I just get this for... Oh, you see how I missed that ball? Oh, I missed that ball. Oh, I missed the ball. Here, I caught it. Oh, thank you. I'll just throw it back. I mean, you've just got to get out of here. Uh, uh... Heads up! They're furious. I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, whoops. You, you throw them back the bottle of Narragansett beer. Oh, oh, you really confused me. Uh, well, I'll just drink this ball. We're now in the last of the fifth inning. Mombuquet will face the bottom of the senator order. Brumley, Brinkman, and Ortega, and they may hit for Ortega because Ridzik is warming up in the senator bullpen. Now, I started to say earlier, Johnny Orlando was clubhouse boy of the Red Sox for years and years. He was there when Mel was there. One night we were playing a night game here. Mike Higgins is an old friend of Lyndon Johnson, uh, a Texan, and Mike was an outstanding athlete down there in Texas, and his brother Ox ran these sporting goods stores all over Texas, and he was a very close friend of Lyndon Johnson, who at that time was a United States senator from Texas. We were at the play the game here. Oh, this must have been seven, eight, or nine years ago. Pitches in air strike call. You were with the ball club then. And one night, two men came into the clubhouse after the game and asked to see Mike Higgins. And Orlando said nobody allowed in the clubhouse, which was the rule. The pitch popped up out in the shallow uh, left field, backing up as Petrocelli. He's under it. He makes the grab, and there's one away. And so he said, listen, we're, uh, we're close friends of his, and also I am Senator Lyndon Johnson, and the other one was Sam Rayburn, the Speaker of the House. And Orlando says, I don't care who you are. Eisenhower, who you are, out. So he kicked them both out. <laughs> Every time I see him, I always remind him about the time he kicked out the future president of the United States out of the Red Sox clubhouse. <laughs> Ed Brinkman up, swings and fouls it back, strike one. The score is 5-1. to one. Red Sox ahead last of the fifth inning. Brinkman grounded out his first time. Pitch is ground ball to shortstop. Malzone up with a can't get it. Petrocelli just misses on a phenomenal play. Malzone went to his left. The ball got under his glove. Malzone covered a lot of ground, was flashing in front of the shortstop. Petrocelli backed him up as it trickled off his glove and nearly threw Brinkman out. It is scored as a base hit. Now we have a pinch hitter. Joe Cunningham is going to bat for Ortega. Joe Cunningham, batting left, will hit for Ortega. With a runner on first, Brinkman one out. Last of the fifth inning. Don Blasting games on deck. Mambo checks his runner. The pitch to left-handed Cunningham is a swing and a miss and a fastball. Cunningham came to the Senators last year with Bill Scowen going to the White Sox. Both veteran first baseman. He's a slashing type of hitter. Flashes line drives to all fields. One step coming. Five runs, five hits for the Red Sox. One run, four hits for the Senators. The pitch is inside a ball. One and one. 
Also a telegram here to uh, myself, Mel, Ned, Engineer Walker. Worlds of luck to you for a most successful season. Leo Clodier, baseball dinner director of Manchester, New Hampshire. I want to thank Leo for his telegram. Hello, Janitor Works being done. Incidentally, we are on the Armed Forces Radio Network today around the world. And I guess this game is being carried, let's see, six hours difference in Germany. Right now, it's seven minutes to nine there. They're listening to the opening of the Major League season at night. Over there, many of our army bases around the world. One ball, one strike. Pitches, ball two. The other way around over in Japan in the Far East. Early in the morning. Two balls and one strike to Joe Cunningham. Breaking them on first, one out. Non-blasting games on deck. Stretched by Mambo in the pitch. Swings and misses on a fastball. Strike two. Two balls, two strikes. You don't think there aren't plenty of secret service men around this place? Well, they're all over down there by the dugout. Two to the count. And the delivery is a swing and a miss. He struck him out on the high slider. Strike three. Cunningham's out. That is strikeout number three for Mambo Kett. There are two down for the Senators, and here's a little blasting game coming up. Blasting game is fouled out and flied out. He is a deadly bunner. He can drop that ball on a dime down the third baseline. So Malzone moves in tight on him on the grass at third. He hit 267 last year. Ken McMullen's on deck. Ed Brinkman on first, two away. The pitch. Ground ball, hit out to Petrocelli. Scoops it up. Fires the first. He's got him. Sides out. No run. One hit, there were no errors, one man left. Al Walker just said, he's got a good arm. That's right, Al. You can fire that ball from shortstop. So at the end of five innings, our score is the Red Sox five and the Senators one. Well, how about telling the fans about that new Red Sox yearbook, Ned? It's out now, Kirk. Matter of fact, it's been out for a couple of days, and it's on sale now throughout newsstands and outlets all over New England. Fine yearbook this year with all the stories and pictures of the Red Sox, their attendant followers, people in the front office, people on the field. It's on sale at newsstands throughout New England with all the pictures, autographs, and information about the organization. Fifty cents plus a dime for postage will get you a Red Sox yearbook by mail. Just send that to Red Sox yearbook. Fenway Park, Boston, 15. And they've got a new color pack deal out this year. Last year, when we offered eight pictures for 50 cents, they're all gone by the middle of July. And they couldn't take care of all the late orders. Well, in 1965, right now, you can get 16 full-color, full-size autographed color pictures of your favorite members of the Red Sox for just $1, plus a dime for postage. These color pictures will be ready. Well, they're ready now, too. You send a dollar plus a dime for postage to Red Sox Color Pictures, Fenway Park, Boston 15. Incidentally, remember, you get a full-size, full-color picture of one of your favorite Red Sox players absolutely free in every copy of the Red Sox 1965 yearbook. The 65 yearbook with this on the cover this year is a sort of a film clip sequence of Dick Raddatz from center field pitching to a batter. Very, uh, very well done. So take a glance at the 1965 yearbook for the Red Sox. Steve Ridzik, right-hander reliever, has come on for the Senators as the Red Sox come up in the sixth. Kirk. Frank Malzahn will start it off with the Red Sox in the sixth inning. Frank has walked and popped up. Frank batting in the number seven spot this year. Malzone, Tillman, and Mambo Cat. Veteran Steve Ritzik, a right-hander. So our 
take it, pitched five innings, allowed five hits, five runs. He was belted for three homers by the Red Sox. He walked three and he struck out three. Malzone hits a high fly to fairly deep center. Don Locke racing back, draws a beat on it, and hauls it in. In deep straightaway center. One out. Here's Bob Tillman up. He reached in an air and he's rounded out to third. Mambo Kett, the pitcher, coming out on deck. Five to one, the Red Sox ahead in the sixth inning. And for you fans in New England listening, we'll see you next Saturday at Fenway Park when the Red Sox meet the Orioles. Sidearm pitch is low and away to Tillman. Ball one. Checking on walks. Four walks Ortega gave up. A 1-0 delivery. One ball with strike to him now. Here's the 1-1 delivery. Strike called. Outside corner fastball. One and two. One ball, two strikes. They play Tillman deep and toward left. Rizik double pumps. Comes in. Outside a ball, two and two. What a day. 81 degrees if you've joined us late here in the nation's capital. Brilliant, sunshiny day. Almost like a day in late June or early July. Two and two is the count to Bob Tillman. That arm pitch is swung on him at strike three. Tillman strikes out. Two down for the Red Sox. And Bill Mambouquet coming up. He has struck out and grounded out. Oh for two. up in delivery. Ground ball hit to the right side. Blasting game. Digs it out of the dirt. Flips over to Bob Chance at first. The Red Sox are retired 1-2-3 in the set. At the end of five and a half innings, our score is the Red Sox 5 and the Senators 1. It all right, the beer with a straight from the barrel taste in bottle, can, or on tap. That's the taste preferred by people who really know beer. So, hi, neighbor, have a gansett. Straight from the barrel taste. That's right. That's gansett. Before we move to the last of the sixth inning now, let's pause for station identification. This is the Red Sox Baseball Network. This is Fun Radio at 1440 on your AM dial and 107.3 on your FM band. WAAB AM and FM in Worcester, Massachusetts. The time is one minute past three o'clock and the temperature outside our studio is 42 degrees. This is Kurt Gowdy, Ned Martin, and Mel Farnell back with you in Washington. Last of the sixth inning. And Ken McMullen is leading off for the Senators. He's batting number two in their lineup, the third baseman. He has struck out and flied to left. First pitch to him. There's a foul ball back into the stand, strike one. McMullen's had a red-hot spring training. He's hit 15 games in a row in the spring. Five runs, five hits for the Red Sox. One run, four hits for the Senators. Don Locke hit a homer for the Senators in the second. Thomas Amantia hit homers in the third. Lenny Green in the fifth for the Red Sox. Red Sox got four big runs in the third. And the pitch is popped up. 
to uh, the shortstop. Rico Petrocelli comes in under it, makes the grab, and is one away. And his new bride, of just a month or two, sitting down by the Red Sox dugout, watching her husband gather that one in. What a thrill that must have been for him today to open the Major League season, Mel. Imagine it's quite a treat for young Rico. Rico is a young fellow that uh, never stops hustling. He's one that tries awfully hard. He's one of the first to the ballpark, one of the last to leave. And this young fellow works hard, and if work proves anything, he should be a great ball player. One out, nobody on. Here's a fellow that's given Bill Monbouquet trouble, Bob Chance. He is single and double, left-handed batter. Mambo starts him off with a slow ball outside. One to nothing. Frank Howard's on deck. We're in the last half of the sixth inning. The 1-0 delivery. There's a hard ground ball to Thomas at first. He lobbed it over to Mambo, kept covering, and we have two down. Notice that President Johnson has a big, long piece of paper down there. It's not a scorecard. And he's passing it around, and they're all huddling on it. And then he'll point to it and lean back and say something to a couple of more. It's a very bipartisan box down there, by the way, both Democrats and Republicans. That may be the latest report from Vietnam, Kurt. Could be. Hey, it's on Martin's income tax. <laughs> Mike Howard up, hit into a forest play and walked. Here's the pitch to Howard. Big right-handed batter takes a strike call. Nothing and one. Two down. Nobody on. Last to the sixth inning. Five to one Red Sox. Oh, this Howard's big. No balls. One strike. They're way over in that infield toward third on him. Mantish. Playing almost uh, back a second. Here's the one strike pitch. He swings and misses on a fastball for strike two. No balls, two strikes. Mambo Kett has walked two. He walked Kirkland in the second and Howard in the fourth. He has struck out three. His two strike pitch. A ground ball to third baseman Mel's on the back of the bag. A long throw for him. Thomas stretches and grabs it, and the side's retired. A slow curveball that had uh, Howard off his timing, and he tapped a two-hopper in back of third. A long throw by Melzon, but he got big Howard, and the Senators are retired in the last half of sixth inning. We up three down at the end of six. Our score is Boston five and Washington one. When you head out for the day, take along a six-pack or two of Narragansett lager beer in the new improved flip-top can. You'll really appreciate these cans. Not only don't you need an opener, but they've got the safest flip-top you can get your hands on. You see the tip of the tab is curled to protect your fingers. Makes it easier to grip and safer to flip. And the keyhole opening is beveled for more comfortable drinking. Just flip, pull, and pour. And you're ready for that famous straight from the barrel taste. The taste people who really know beer like best. The next time you're off on a day's outing, be sure to take along a six-pack or two of Narragansett Lager beer. Hi, neighbor. Have a Gansett. Now in the new, improved aluminum flip-top can. Just played Hi, neighbor for us in the background. Very accommodating. The Narragansett theme song. We're in the seventh inning now, ladies and gentlemen. With the top of the Red Sox batting order up, Rico Petrocelli will start it off. He has struck out twice and walked. He's facing veteran Steve Ribzik. Petrocelli, Green, and Yastrzemski. The pitch to the switch hitter is cut on. There's a long drive in the deep center. Locked, backing up, back, back, under it, and grabs it out there in a warning pass. And the youngster hit that ball a long ways, but the straightaway deep center. One out. He had some power in the minor leagues, Mal. He hit uh, a lot of runs in and home runs two years ago. Rico will jump up now and then and hit the long ball for you, both from the right side and left side of the plate. He's a little fellow, but uh, has a lot of power. Of course, uh, his problem now is making contact a little more often, and I'm sure by playing every day, he will improve that. Lenny Green's up. He's popped the short, grounded out, and hit a home run down the right field line. 
Batting left-handed. The pitch is ball one. Other games are underway. In the American League, Minnesota's leading the Yankees one to nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Bouton against Cott. They're afraid they start that one in the snow this time of year up there. The pitch is over for a strike call, one and one. Detroit plays Kansas City tonight. Cleveland's at Los Angeles tonight. Chicago and Baltimore open their season tomorrow at Baltimore. One ball, one strike to Lenny Green. One out, nobody on. Green hits a drive down the right field line again. This ball is another home run. A line drive by Lenny Green right down the line into the corner. And Green has now hit two homers in this game. He was the second leading batter in spring training. The Twins and the Angels thought he was washed up, but he's out to disprove that fact. Larry Claflin was kidding him in the dugout today. He said, Lenny, the way you've been looking, you've got a chance to be the comeback man of the year. Well, if one day does it, he is. He's had two home runs already today. Pitch is low, ball one. Four home runs by the Red Sox in this opening game, and you can't credit Fenway Park for this one. Lenny uh, seems though he found a target down in the right field corner. Those two home runs that were hit weren't any more than five yards apart. One out, nobody on. Yastrzemski's grounded out and walked twice. Six to one Red Sox. Yastrzemski takes a fastball over, a strike call. They've got one, two, three, four. Four lefties and five right-handers in the lineup. It's good balance in that batting order right now. A one-one delivery. There's a high fly by Yastrzemski down the left field line. Howard chasing it, curving toward the stands, and dropping foul out of play. One ball, one strike. Steve Ridley throws quite differently from the last time that I saw him when with the Phillies, Steve was a, an overhand pitcher. However, since then, he has hurt his arm and is now throwing more from the side and has added a little jerky, deceptive motion to his delivery. One ball, two strikes to Carl Yastrzemski. One out, nobody on, seventh inning. Six to one, Red Sox ahead. Rizik comes in. Yastrzemski takes it inside. Ball two, strike two. the homers, one by Mantilla, two by Green, have been with nobody on, Thomas hit one and hit one with two on, and Locke hit one with nobody on for the Senators. There's a swing and a miss, he strikes out on a fastball, two down, a low fastball around his knees. Canigliaro is single to left, single to right, and grounded out, he's two out of three. Over the National League, the Dodgers are leading the Mets three nothing into three, Drysdale against Jackson, Willie Davis and Drysdale have hit homers. Giants and Pirates, no score at the end of six. Marichal against Veal. Milwaukee and Cincinnati, no score at the end of an inning and a half. Cloninger against O'Toole. Canigliaro hits a foul off the fist from the ground down the third baseline, strike one. St. Louis playing at Chicago. Philadelphia at Houston in the new dome tonight. Two down in the seventh inning for the Red Sox. Nobody on. One strike to Canigliaro. Rizik double pumps and then comes in. And there's a long smash by Canigliaro. Way up! Midway in the upper deck. What a clap by Canigliaro. Young Tony, who hit 24 last year and missed seven weeks of the season with two broken bones, hits that one midway in the upper deck. And the Red Sox have hit five home runs today. Canigliaro now has three hits in this first game. Mm. How could they leave him off that list of young stars in baseball? What power we're seeing today, Kurt. I don't know what Billy Herman told the boys before the game, but uh, I sure hope that he continues to repeat. Lee Thomas takes the strike. One, two, three, four, five homers by the Red Sox. They're ahead seven to one, and they're still buzzing. Canigliaro's smash was longer than Locks. It was halfway in the upper deck in left field. Here's the one strike pitch. He knocks Thomas down. Thomas goes down. It's thrown right at his head. He dropped the bat. One ball, one strike. This Red Sox power today reminds me of the William Stevens Grofo and Door era. With every cut, they present a threat for the opposing pitcher. 
One ball, one strike. Two down. Seven to one Red Sox in the seventh. Thomas takes outside. Ball two. You know, Thomas, two years ago with the Angels, had a great year when he played first base. Hit 24 homers, knocked in over 100 runs, hit 290-something. Well, if he could duplicate that at first, wouldn't that be something in that lineup? Of course, that's a mighty big word in sports. There's a curve in there for a strike, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Just look down some buddy over there in that presidential box is pointing up in left field where Canegler uh, hit that tremendous home run. Two balls and two strikes. Two down, base is empty. A 2-2 delivery. He struck him out on a high fastball. The Red Sox are retired. But in the seventh, they had two runs. Two hits. A line drive homer by Green and a king-size clout by Canigliaro way in the upper deck in left field. There were no errors and nobody left at the end of six and a half with a seventh inning stretch on. The score is the Red Sox seven and the Senators one. What's the name of this song? It's a song of service so good it's guaranteed to every customer every time. For business, for pleasure, in any kind of weather. Naturally, I mean Atlantic Red Ball Dealers service. When you want to go places and do things, what a pleasure your driving can be. For quality products and top-notch service, your Red Ball Dealer is the man to see. Every Atlantic Red Ball dealer will always clean your windshield, weather permitting, and offer to check the oil, or you'll get a $2 gift certificate for any Atlantic service or product except gasoline. This offer may vary in some states, but Atlantic Red Ball dealer service never varies. The name of the song? Atlantic, keep your car on the go, 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 keep on the go with Atlantic. We're going now to the last of the seventh inning. Bill Mambuquet will face Don Locke, Willie Kirkland, and Mike Brumley. Seven to one, Boston leading Washington. Play by play by Ned Martin. Don Locke leading off against Mambuquet. Senators have just four hits in the ball game. Locke has the biggest, a home run in the second inning, accounting for the Senators' one run. Takes a high pitch for ball one. Red Sox have seven hits. Five of them have been overs. Two other hits have been singles by Canigliaro. Pitch to lock. Misses inside. Two balls, no strikes. Well, there was a scuffling around down the presidential box. Everybody was getting up. There was the uh, bottom of the seventh, and the, everybody, the Washington fans stood up, so the president stood up. And all around him, as the cameras whirred and clicked, 2-0 the count. Lock swings and misses. Two balls, one strike. Forty-three thousand five hundred fifty-four here today. Lock takes a strike on the outside corner. A beauty, a slider. And the count is two and two. This is the largest opening day crowd for D.C. Stadium, incidentally. And, of course, uh, definitely the largest crowd we've ever seen down here with the Red Sox playing. Mambo's 2-2 pitch. Misses low and away. Ball three. Three and two. Lock is homeward and slide to center. He'll be followed by Kirkland and Brumley. Mambo catch has been just about as good as he's had to be. He's got just three strikeouts. He's walked two. He's had the ball in the strike zone, making them hit. They've been popping up a lot on him today. So his fastball is hopping some. Lock swings and misses strike three. One away in the seventh. Four strikeouts for Mambo. Willie Kirkland has walked. And he popped up into that double play in the fourth inning, the infield fly. 
with two men on in which Malzone dropped the ball, but then through to second, Mantilla tagged the runner, Chance, who had moved off second base. And that was the only double play of the game. Pitch to Kirkland, and Willie lets it go down low, ball one. Earl Wilson will pitch the game day after tomorrow here, and right-hander Bus Narum is scheduled to go for the Senators. Those same two will work on the weekend at Fenway. There's a high pop fly. First base side, Lee Thomas near the bag. The wind blowing it now, and Mantia makes the catch as Thomas gave way to Felix, who had a better beat on the ball. Kirkland pops to Mantia. They're two down, and Mike Brumley comes in 0 for 2. Minnesota picked up another run in the second. They lead the Yankees 2-0 at the end of two. The Cardinals are out in front of Chicago Cubs 5-0 at the end of an inning and a half. It's the Giants nothing and Pittsburgh nothing. The end of six and one half inning. Fine pitchers duel. Gibson going for the or uh, let's see that's the Giants and Pittsburgh Pirates. Marischal for the Giants. Pitch to Brumley is uh, on the corner. Called strike one. And Bob Veal going for the Pirates in that shutout so far. Milwaukee Cincinnati scoreless after two. Brumley takes the pitch inside. Ball one. And as Kurt told you, the Dodgers leading the Mets five to nothing. Now at the end of three and a half innings, there's the Dodgers got a few home runs going for them. Drysdale has helped his own cause with a two-run homer. Pitch outside, ball two, two balls, one strike. Chicago and Baltimore will open tomorrow, and of course tonight in the American League is Detroit at Kansas City and Cleveland out on the coast against the Angels. Mambo winds, fires. Brumley pops it up to the left side. Malzone down the line, waiting. He's in foul ground now, and he makes the catch. And it's an easy one, two, three inning for Bill Mambouquet, who now has retired eight in a row. Nothing across the score at the end of seven is the Red Sox seven and Washington one. Say, you're giving your car every chance to perform at its best. Well, you're not if you allow damaging deposits to interfere with the efficient operation of the carburetor. It's a known fact that some gasolines leave deposits around the carburetor throttle plate, and as they build up, these deposits can cause rough idling, wasted gasoline, and stalling. But that won't happen when you use Atlantic Imperial, the clean carburetor gasoline. Even if deposits have already accumulated in the throttle plate area, a few tankfuls of Atlantic Imperial will dissolve them and wash them harmlessly away. And they won't return so long as you continue to use Atlantic Imperial. So if your engine doesn't run as smoothly as you'd like, maybe you're not giving it a chance. See what happens when you use Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Felix, Felix Van Tia leading away for the Red Sox in the top of the eighth. In the Red Sox bullpen, just in case, right-hander Jack LeMay, but left-hander Arnold Early are throwing. Red Sox with a fine six-run six bulge right now. Pitch to Van Tia, moves outside, ball one. Felix has fly to left, hit a home run, and grounded the third. He's pulled the ball today. This is one of his favorite ballparks. Hit three homers here last year, has one already this season. Rizik moves outside with a flat curve, and it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes. As Mel Parnell pointed out, Rizik has changed his style of pitching. This is a fellow, Mel, that uh, is a hard worker. He was a good relief pitcher for Washington last year. He and uh, Ron Klein were their hardest workers. He'll battle you. Throws to Mantilla, gets the strike over. Two balls and one strike. Felix Pacat up with Malzone on deck. Ridzik winds, throws, and misses inside. Ball three. Red Sox ahead 7-1 to one by dint of a three-run homer and a bases empty homer in the third. A home run in the fifth and two home runs in the seventh. Homers accounting for all of their runs. Wind up and pitch. Strike called on the inside slice. The count is three and two. 
Three balls, two strikes. Rizik takes the sign. Outfield laying around the left on Mancia. Ground ball to third, scooped up by McMullen. Trolleys his throw to first in time. There's one away. Second time, Mancia is grounded out to third base. And Malzone comes up. He's walked, popped to short, and fly very deep to center. If McMullen plays, uh, they worried about his third base play. They figure that they got his bat. Instead of a glove, they gave up John Kennedy to the Dodgers, who is a superior fielder to McMullen. But they say that the McMullen will do the job around third. Malzone tries to get away from a pitch, and it bounces foul off his bat down the third baseline. Looking at McMullen, Mel, and a couple of those ground balls, he takes a little wind-up to get it over. He's got a good arm, but he takes a little time to get it away. Yes, he takes a, a full step before throwing. He feels the ball, takes that one step in the direction he's throwing, and tries to get a little more body to his throw. Well, I guess a third baseman can afford that better than anybody else. Anyway, he gets the ball faster, hit at him, and uh, has a little time. Pitch to Malzone, swung on and missed, strike one. Malzone in uh, what must be about his eighth opener for the Red Sox. Steve Redzik kicks, throws, and Frank peels it foul back. Nothing and two. Minnesota leading the Yankees 2 nothing at the end of two and a half now, and Pittsburgh did not score <coughs> pardon me, in the seventh. Giants and Pirates are nothing nothing at the end of seven innings. Left hander Frank Kreutzer is warming up in the Senator Bullpen now. Malzone looks at a pitch, breaking low and away. One ball, two strikes. Senator outfield around the left on Frank. Well, they always play him. Every club that he faces, just about, unless he's against an overpoweringly fast pitcher, they'll play him as a dead pull hitter. Second base in the blasting game is shading the bag a couple of steps. Malzone swings and misses strike three. He's fooled on a breaking pitch. Ridzik. Gets his fourth strikeout since coming in there. It's been either feast or famine with him. He's uh, had four strikeouts and given up two homers in the two and two-thirds that he's worked. Matt, he's probably a little tough on the right-hander. It appears that he would be very tough to pick up with that jerky motion in his delivery. Foul ball by Bob Tillman, strike one. That's right, he, uh, he's tough to... Uh, he, he looks faster than he is, actually. That's true. Malzone was fooled the first time he looked at Rizik, and, of course, Tillman was also fooled on the last pitch. Uh, Bob started into the pitch, and at the last minute, it appeared to be a self-defense swing. Tillman wraps the ground ball towards short, cut off by McMullen, the third baseman. Ken throws in plenty of time. Good play by McMullen, and the Red Sox are down in order in the eighth inning. The end of seven and a half. The score is Red Sox seven and Washington one. Going to the bottom of the eighth inning now. Eddie Brinkman will lead off for the Senators, and looking down at the on-deck circle, it looks like Jim King, who will pinch hit for the pitcher, Ritzik. So they'll uh, pinch hit the left-handed hitting Jim King for Steve Rizik, then go to the top of the order. Rizik uh, pitched three innings while he was in there. Eddie Brinkman, right-handed hitting shortstop, is always one for two. He had an infield single in the fifth. Mambo Kett kicks and throws. And his pitch is right in there, called strike one. Brinkman, one of the classier fielding shortstops in the league. And uh, the Senators figure that if he hits 240 or 250 for them, why, he'll help them. He has had an error today, which is a rarity for him. He hits a sharp shot to short, one-handed by Petroselli, throws the first in time. Rico toward the hole, made a couple of steps. It was not that he went so far, but that he got a tough hop because it bounced right in front of him and off, uh, off to the side. That's right. Rico showed the very quick hands that he possesses. That ball was hit real sharp. He was playing to go through the hole, and when the ball made contact with the infield, it bounced to the rear of Rico, and the quick hand, he reached back, speared the ball, 
had a perfect throw to Lee Thomas to retire the hitter. Jim King, the pinch hitter, lost the first pitch high in the air in the right field. Thomas back, Mantilla back, Canigliaro in, and Tony C. makes the catch about five yards in fair. Jim King, pinch hitting for Steve Rizdick, hit the first pitch up in the air, and Canigliaro made the catch. Two down quickly in the ninth, and Mambo is a machine out there. In the bottom of the eighth inning, said the top of the ninth, it's the eighth inning. Two gone. Blasting game is the hitter. 0 for 3. He is fouled out, slide to center, and grounded out. Mambo delivers. Ground ball hits toward Mantilla. Felix up with it, throws him out. And another easy inning for Mambo. Let's see, that's 9, 10, 11 men in a row he's retired. Nothing across in the eighth inning. The score at the end of eight innings of play is Boston 7 and Washington 1. Opening day at Fenway Park. Remember coming up on the 17th, this coming Saturday, Easter weekend, and a big weekend for all of you to get out, take the family. We've got Saturday and Sunday afternoon games against the Baltimore Orioles, and then a Patriots Day doubleheader against these Washington Senators. All in the afternoon, that's a four-game homestand before the Red Sox hit the road. Red Sox ticket offices open during the week from 9 to 5 at Fenway Park. And at on 8.30 on Friday night for your convenience. So make plans to be there Saturday, especially opening day against the Orioles. Game time will be at 2.15. The Harvard Band will be performing along with the conducted by Arthur Fiedler of the Boston Pops. Jerry Vale will sing the national anthem, one of New England's own, and uh, big doings coming up at Fenway starting Saturday. We'll see you there. Right now, let's pause for station identification. This is the Red Sox Baseball Network. This is WAAB AM and FM in Worcester, Massachusetts. Fun Radio at 1440, where we play the name game. And your first clue will be coming your way at 15 minutes past the hour of 4 o'clock with a $53 jackpot. Left-hander Frank Kreitzer is coming on to pitch for the Washington Senators as we move to the top of the ninth. With the Red Sox having seven runs, seven hits and no errors. Washington one run, four hits and one error. All seven Red Sox runs as a result, directly or indirectly, of homers. They've got five homers today. Two by Lenny Green, one by Canigliaro, one by Thomas, and one by Mantilla. Thomas's home run came with two men on. And the Washington run also as a result of a homer. That was by Don Locke in the second inning. Steve Ridzik went three innings in relief. Gave up two hits and two runs. They were both homers. Walked nobody, struck out four. And Frank Kreitzer, who used to belong to the White Sox, came over as the throw-in pitcher on the Scourin deal. Along with Joe Cunningham, will pitch the top of the ninth. Kreitzer, who used to belong uh, to the Red Sox organization, Pitched briefly with the White Sox and uh, now with the Washington Senators. The first man he'll face will be the pitcher, Bill Mambo Kett. Mambo, then Petroselli and Green. And we're ready to go, Kirk. Mambo struck out, grounded out twice. He's 0 for 3. And he should get a good hand for the beautiful game he's pitched here on opening day when he steps into that batter's box. At the end of eight innings, the Red Sox, seven runs, seven hits, and no errors. The Senators have one run, four hits, and one error. Letting Kreiser take some extra warm-up pitches. No game tomorrow. We'll be broadcasting from here on Wednesday afternoon. No game Thursday and Friday. The Red Sox will be at home Saturday against Baltimore. And there's the hand for Mambo Kett as he's announced to the crowd. So a left-hander, face of the right-handed batter. First pitch, the swing and a miss on a fastball for strike one. Reiser last year won two and lost six with Washington. He'd won three and lost one with the White Sox. He's high and wide with that one. One ball, one strike. Bob 
Bob Hefner and Jerry Ritchie, uh, Jay Ritchie, are warming up in the Red Sox bullpen. I think they're just working out, though. A 1-1 one -one delivery is a curve over for a strike call to Mambo Kett. One ball, two strikes. Base is empty as Mambo Kett leads off in the ninth. A 1-2 pitch. Is high for ball two. Two and two. Minnesota's leading the Yankees now is two to nothing at the end of three and a half innings. Here's the two two pitch. Strike three called. Mambo Cat knew it. He just turned around and walked away. Here's a real pitcher's duel going on at Pittsburgh between Marichal and Veal. No score between the Giants and Pirates at the end of eight. Cardinals lead the Cubs 5-2 to two at the end of two. The Dodgers 6, the Mets 1 at the end of four and a half. Rico Petrocelli now batting right-handed, taps the ground ball foul to the right of home plate for strike one. He has struck out twice and hit a long fly ball to center field and walk. One out, nobody on. Lenny Green's on deck. Pricer is the third pitcher of the game for the Senators. A foul on the high curve back out of plate, strike two. Ortega went the first five innings, Ridzik pitched three innings. Ortega threw three home run balls and Rizik threw two. Two strikes. In comes the pitch. He fouls it back out of play. A no ball, two strike count to Rico Petrocelli. One out, nobody on. Kreiser, the left-hander, with a big high kick, throws and strikes him out. That's the third time Petrocelli struck out. Probably drops the ball, picks it up, throws it down the chance. We have two down, and Lenny Green up has popped the short, grounded out, and hit two home runs in almost the same identical spot. Line drives right into the right field corner. Green getting a hand. If he can make it three, Mel. Left hander, a little tougher for him right now. Here's a pitch to Green. Over his head for ball one. He was ducking under that one. Well, that's one he'll never hit out of here, Kirk. That pitch is behind him. <laughs> one ball, no strikes. Two down, nobody on here in the ninth inning. Pitch to him. Green takes a strike call. One ball, one strike. The Senators in their last bid in the last of the ninth will have McMullen, Chance, and Howard up. The one-one pitch to Lenny Green. Outside for ball two. Two and one. Two down. Bases empty. Green hits out of a slight crouch. He swings and misses on a fastball for strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Kreitzer can throw hard. He's a hard-throwing left-hander. He went from the Red Sox organization. He was drafted by Chicago. And they traded him over here to Washington. The 2-2 delivery. Foul back. Of course, they have two great left-handers already in that Chicago staff. Gary Peters and Juan Bizarro. I wouldn't mind having them. We could use them. One's a 20-game winner. The other are 19. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch is a foul ball. He poured a fastball in on him. And he just got a piece of it and fouled it up against the screen. So the count, two and two.
And a 2-2 delivery is strike three, swinging Kreitzer struck out the side. And that's all for the Red Sox in the top of the ninth inning. At the end of eight and a half, it's the Red Sox seven and the Senators one. Those 1927 cars were great in their day. They had good motor oil in 1947, too. And as engines were improved year after year, Atlantic developed finer motor oils to protect them. Now comes the finest. New Atlantic Imperial Motor Oil. First oil so good, Atlantic has given it the imperial name and shield. Today's driving conditions increase the amount of dirt and sludge that build up inside your engine to interfere with performance. But new Atlantic Imperial Motor Oil holds dirt and sludge in suspension, helps keep it off engine parts. None of the new highly publicized motor oils can protect your engine better than new Atlantic Imperial Motor Oil. to the ninth inning. No Mon Bouquet trying to go the distance here in this opening game. Has given up four hits in the first eight innings. One run. That was a home run by Don Locke in the second. And Mon Bouquet in the ninth will face Ken McMullen, Bob Chance, and Frank Howard. The number two, three, and four hitters in the Washington lineup. Same lineup defensively. That's about the best defensive lineup the Red Sox have. That's why they've started the season. Try to strengthen the defense. So there are no changes there. They don't have to platoon for anyone late in the game. Here's a pitch. It is in there for a strike call. Nothing and one. Well, President Johnson's still here. And Vice President Humphreys, they haven't had too much to excite them from the home crowd today, but they've seen six home runs in this game. The one-strike delivery, foul ball, and I know one thing, they all got out and got some nice air today. It's better than being inside there in that White House today. Well, huh? That old stuffy White House. Isn't it nice to be out here in this fresh air? <laughs> today was a beautiful day for it. Two strikes to McMullen. Leading off, last of the ninth inning, the two-strike pitch to him. There's a long blast. That one is out of here, and it is a home run for McMullen into the Red Sox bullpen. up, takes iron outside, ball one. He singled, double, and grounded out. Somebody just brought a youngster, boy about seven or eight years old, and sat him down there next to President Johnson. They want no pitch. Swings and hits a high foul over by the Red Sox dugout. It may be playable. Malzone's over there and grabs it right on the top step of the Red Sox dugout. One away. Here's Frank Howard coming up now. He's hit into the fourth play, walked and grounded out. Howard, big, strong right-hander. He's hit into the fourth play. First time up. And then grounded the third again in the sixth, so he's hit that ball on the ground twice to third. Mambo overhands him. He hits a towering pop-up. That might have hit the dome in Houston. Waiting for it. Petrocelli gives way to Mantee as the wind blows it away. That might have tested that new dome. That was here a mile up in the air. Howard pops up. There are two down now. And the batter is Don Locke, who's hit a home run, flying out and struck out. 
Seven home runs in this game. Five by the Red Sox, two by the Senators. All of them with nobody on except Lee Thomas, who hit one with two on. Seven to two Red Sox, last of the ninth inning. We have our first extra inning game of the season. The Giants and Pirates are in the tenth inning, no score, over at Pittsburgh. All right, here's the pitch to Don Locke. Locke takes it, a strike called. He was bending away, and a slow curve came in there and picked that inside corner. Dick Raddatz is warming up right now for the Red Sox. Willie Kirkland on deck for the Senators. Two down. A one-strike pitch. Swings and fouls the fastball back out of play. Strike two. Nothing and two. Two strikes. Two down. 43,554 attending this game. Paid attendance. Always a few freebies. Two strike count. The pitch to lock. Outside. Try to get him to go for a wide slider. He wouldn't do it. One ball, two strikes. Minnesota leading the Yanks now four to nothing at the end of four. Here's the one-two pitch. Outside again, ball two, strike two to Don Locke. We'll be on the air Wednesday. Red Sox and Senators Earl Wilson will be pitching for the Red Sox. And Buster Naram for the Senators will be on a 125 on the station Wednesday afternoon. A two-and-two pitch. Bounding ball to the mound. Mambo Kett has it. There's the throw to first. Mambo Kett goes all the way. Lee Thomas flips him the ball, congratulates him as the Red Sox, in very impressive fashion, have won their opening game of the 1965 season. They had strong pitching today by a rejuvenated Mambo Kett. They had uh, five home runs. They stole two bases. They had a lot of zip out there, and they looked like a good ball club, which you always do when you get a combination of pitching and batting. We'll be back with a wrap-up right after this message. Perseverance is a remarkable quality. Perseverance? It certainly is. Think of the great perseverers of all time. Robert Bruce and the Spider. Right, Robert Fulton and the Steamboat. James Watt and the Tea Kettle. Uh, Thomas Edison and the Electric Light. Ephraim Twiffle and the Red Ball. Uh, Ephraim who and the what? Ephraim Twiffle and the Red Ball. Eve is one of the truly great perseverers. For years, he's been keeping everlastingly at it. Keeping at what? At his dogged pursuit of a free tank full of gasoline from his Atlantic Red Ball dealer. Oh. Let me explain it. If your Atlantic Red Ball dealer ever forgets to clean your windshield, weather permitting, of course, or if he forgets to offer to check the oil, your gasoline purchase is free. Ah. Now, this offer may vary in some states, but I might add that Red Ball dealers don't often forget. Ephraim Twiffle is lost. Oh, he's won. Well, it's true he's never gotten a free tank full, but he's got the cleanest windshield in town. And you will, too, if you persevere in driving in for guaranteed Atlantic Red Ball service with its great gasoline. Uh, you'll be thankful for a tank full. Even if you have to pay for it. So the first one's in the books in the Red Sox here before President Johnson have defeated uh, Washington 7-2 on a gorgeous sunny afternoon in the nation's capital. Before Ned Martin wraps it up officially for us, let's get Mel Parnell's comment on the game. Well, the highlight of the day's game was the pitching of Billy Mambo Kett and the long ball power of the Red Sox. Billy was in command all the way, had a good fastball, a good curveball, mixed his pitches well, stayed ahead of the hitter and made the hitter hit his pitch. The long ball power of the Red Sox was outstanding with Lenny Green leading the way with two home runs. Solo blast by Lee Thomas, Tony Canigliaro, and Felix Mantia. The Red Sox hit the ball very well throughout the ball game. The defensive play of Rico Petticelli was quite a highlight of the game. Rico made quite a few defensive plays and looked very good defensively. And now back to Kurt Gowdy. All right, Mal, uh, that's number one out of the way for you. And it'll be easier from now, from now on the rest of the way. So uh, Ned Martin will wrap it up, and we'll see you, ladies and gentlemen, Wednesday afternoon at 125 with another Red Sox broadcast. And now here's Ned. 
Turtles on the game. Red Sox seven runs, seven hits, no errors, and four left. Washington two runs, five hits, one error, and three left. Mambo, of course, the winning pitcher all the way, his first of the year. And let's see, he has two runs in 45 innings. The last 45 innings that he has pitched against these Washington Senators, counting uh, the last four games last year and this one. The loser was the starter, Phil Ortega, who had trouble with a home run ball. He gave up three of them. He went five innings and lost the game. Ridzik worked three and gave up two homers. And Frank Kreitzer came on and struck out the side of the ninth. The Red Sox, uh, it was either feast or famine with them. They hit home runs or they struck out. They had five homers and they struck out ten times. On Wednesday, it'll be Earl Wilson against Bus Narum as we get a first look at Earl this year. Bob Bouquet and Wilson will be the pitchers Saturday and Sunday against Baltimore. And uh, we're going to look at Jim Lonborg and Earl or Dave Moorhead on Monday in the Patriots' day doubleheader against the Senators. Other scores quickly. Minnesota leading the Yankees 4-0 at the end of four. In the National League, the Dodgers leading the Mets 6-1 to one at the end of five and a half. The Giants and Pittsburgh, nothing, nothing at the end of the regulation nine. And Cincinnati leading Milwaukee one to nothing at the end of four. It's the Cardinals five and Chicago Cubs four at the end of three innings. We saw just about everything today. The home run, the president. We saw the Red Sox steal two bases. We saw a couple of fine defensive plays by the new shortstop Petroselli. A great play by first baseman Lee Thomas. And Thomas had the RBI lead with a three-run homer. But Lenny Green had the most home runs. He got two in his first appearance officially as a Red Sox ball player. Final score, Red Sox 7 and Washington 2. Ned Martin, along with Kurt Gowdy, Mel Parnell, and our engineer Al Walker, saying so long from Washington. Red Sox baseball has been brought to you by the Atlantic Refining Company and your local Atlantic dealer. By the brewers of Narragansett Lager Beer, the beer with that famous straight-from-the-barrel taste. And by White Owl Cigars, the cigars made the costly way with tobaccos aged in wood for mildness and flavor. And Tipperillo by Robert Burns, the modern smoke found in all the right places with the right people.